Hey everyone, it's Michelle. Welcome to my new YouTube setup. I've been really struggling with the audio lately. My husband helped me set up the mic in a podcast style fashion. So hopefully from this point on the audio sounds even better. All right, let's get into today's video. I just want to share with you all what my current favorites are for the year of 2024 so far. Not only do I have some skincare to share with you all, but I also have makeup hair care, and some miscellaneous lifestyle items that I just thought would make this video slightly different and less redundant because I mostly talk about skincare all the time. So having said that, let's get into today's video, starting off with everyone's favorite subject, skincare. So first things first, I wanted to give a shout out to some products that are not very new on my channel. You've seen them multiple times already. It's the Jordan Samuel Hydrate the Mist and Hydrate Facial Serum. So ever since I received this at the end of November, beginning of December, they've just been performing exactly how I expected them to in my skincare routine. Just really light, hydrating, gentle layers. Ever since my skin normalized back to its original oily skin type, I feel like I've been struggling a little bit with textures when it comes to skincare because what I've been using before, I feel like I'm just noticing a lot more congestion. So I really needed to switch up my skincare routine in a way that accommodates my original skin type. So Hydrating layers, I definitely wanted to keep in my skincare routine because some days I do find that moisturizer, even light layers, is a bit too much. So light hydrating layers really does the trick and that's what these two Jordan Samuel products do. I love the Hydrate the Mist. This is a repurchased. It just feels right in my skincare routine. Even during the winter months where skin tends to be a little bit drier, I feel like these have performed while the Hydrate the Mist, despite it being a very light, lovely mist, it has been doing the trick at prepping my skin for the rest of my skincare routine. And it does have a slight soothing effect to it. Now moving on to the Hydrate Facial Serum. I really like the texture of it. It's a very light, runny gel consistency. I use about two pumps all over my face and neck and I find that is more than enough. I do feel the moisturizing finish on my skin. Nothing too tacky or overwhelming, just enough for what I need right now in my skincare routine. The next skincare item is also a really nice light hydrating product. It is not the Paula's Choice Clear Acne Body Spray. It's what's inside of this bottle. It is rose water mixed with a little bit of glycerin. I got this idea from one of the viewers on my channel who also puts a little bit of glycerin in their rose water spray. So I did just that and I really feel like the glycerin up the ante with the rose water. For my skin, I really like how it refreshes on the really hot summer days where I felt like I was so sweaty and my face just felt like there was just too much going on with it. I would spray some of this into a cotton round, wipe my face and then reapply sunscreen all over again. But the way I used it to wipe off any sweat, oils, moisture from sunscreen, makeup, skincare in general, I feel like it really reset my skin in the best of ways. Now adding glycerin to the formula, it just gives it a bit more of a boost in the hydration department. The last set of skincare products that I've been really enjoying for the past couple of months are from Niche Beauty Lab and it is their Acne Me line, which is for those of us with acne prone skin. The main ingredient out of all the products from what I've seen is salicylic acid, but it's not the only active in the formulas. There are some other actives as well, like one of these products I believe has the derivative of azelaic acid and I am positive this one has some glycolic acid in the formula, but overall the main anti-acne ingredient is salicylic acid. So I was sent four products to try because I believe they launched this brand in CVS in the United States. And I picked these two plus the acne patches and the sunscreen, but out of the four I received, I would say these two are the biggest standouts out of the bunch because no surprise, this is exactly how I like to use salicylic acid in my skincare routine as a cleanser or as a body spray. Let's start out with the cleanser. I tried the Transparent Lab PHA cleanser in the past, got a really bad allergic reaction to that, whereas this one was way more gentle on my skin. It still has that jelly non-foaming like consistency 
but no irritation whatsoever. I know one of you commented that it may have been the result of a very low pH from the Transparent Lab PHA cleanser, and I think you're right, because this one is in more respect to our skin's actual acid mantle at around 5.5. It might be a five, but still, it's closer to around the skin's acid mantle, therefore, it feels a lot gentler on my skin. As I've just mentioned, I've been noticing more congestion on my skin with the previous products I have been using and trying to use up back when my skin was a lot more severely dehydrated and dry. I've particularly been noticing this congestion on my T-zone, especially on my nose with sebaceous filaments. I know that they're always there, they can't be rid of completely, but I've noticed that sometimes they look oxidized or it just looks like there's too much going on on my nose. So I've been using this every so often in the morning, evening, in the shower, just whenever I feel like it. And I have noticed that my nose, while the sebaceous filaments are still there, they definitely don't look dark, they don't look oxidized, and it doesn't look like they're just trying to come out of my nose. So I feel like ever since rotating this cleanser in my skincare routine every so often, they've been looking a lot better. And I'm really happy that this cleanser is gentle and it caters to my desire to use the occasional jelly non-foaming cleanser. The second Acne Me product that I've been really liking out of the four I received is the Zit Back body spray for blemish prone skin. So like I said, this has salicylic acid in it, which is typically what I like to use, hence this bottle right here of the Paulus Choice 2% acne body spray. It has been performing just like I want it to. It cleared up any congestion I have been experiencing this past winter. Not a lot compared to the summer, but it still performs well just the same. I don't feel any congestion on my back. And when I do get the occasional painful bump from, you know, lack of doing my body care routine, this does come to the rescue and clears my back. When I looked at it recently, I barely saw any hyperpigmentation, so it's been helping with that as well. But the one con I do want to say about this body spray is that I feel like when I use it too much, like every time I shower, I notice that the skin on my back has become more sensitive. I've noticed a lot more itching. If I'm lying in bed reading a book or something, I've noticed just the friction of lying on bed, moving around has been irritating my back more and that's never happened to me before. So I do think I need to cut down on my use of this spray. But once I give these two items plus the other two a bit more of a run, see how they perform, I will most definitely get back to you all on how they are. That's it for all the skincare products I've been really liking and appreciating so far for 2024, but the Acnemy Zitbeck product is of course for body, and that's actually the next category of favorites, body products. So we have the Acnemy Zitbeck, and the second one here is from the body shop. I know I have not purchased anything from the body shop in years, but I went shopping with my friend during the New Year's sales. It was on sale, so I had to pick a few things up. This is their body yogurt in the scent avocado. It says it's for normal to dry skin, but the reason I picked this up is because the texture is very light. I told my friend I really did not want to use any of the body butters. I still felt them to be rather heavy. I don't like it when moisturizer sits a whole lot on my skin. Whereas this one, as you can see, is a yogurt type texture. It really does sink fast into the skin. The scent is not too overwhelming. I picked avocado specifically for that reason. And I just love how easily it glides on my skin without issue. There's no stickiness whatsoever. It is seriously one of the best body moisturizers I've tried in a long time. Now let's move on to some makeup products. I feel like I haven't talked about makeup in a really long time on my channel. So I do have three to share with you all. Two I am wearing today. One. I put on when I tried to film yesterday and it completely failed, but I'll talk about it nonetheless. It is Slurp Laboratories Hydramer. I won this in a giveaway back at the end of December or something, maybe beginning of January. I'm pretty sure end of December though. And it was winning one of their kits. So one was the fundamentals kit and the other one, I believe it was the treatments kit or something like that. I chose the fundamentals kit because I felt like I did not need any more actives in my skincare routine. I was and still am at a point in my clear skin journey where I just want to take it easy on my skin, use tretinoin, niacinamide as the main actives, 
maybe introduce vitamin C later on. But right now I just want to take it easy with my skin in terms of actives. So I thought trying out the fundamentals was more aligned with what my current goals are with my skin. So the Hydramer was part of that kit. And this reminds me of a product I liked in the past that I have not used in years. It is the J1 Jelly Pack. Does anyone remember that when Nikki Tutorials first talked about it? I heard about it beforehand from, um, you know, just Korean beauty in general. This is what it looks like right here, a very thick gel consistency, and you really have to spread it in your hands to apply all over your face and neck to really get good mileage out of it. Otherwise it doesn't spread that well. The texture, the stickiness of it, the way you apply it, it reminds me exactly of the J1 Jelly Pack. I have a few reasons that I like this primer. The first one being is how well makeup adheres to my skin. Secondly, how it just eliminates dry patches from my face. So I did apply this yesterday and I have followed up with a concealer all around my face. It looked really nice and smooth. My skin actually looked a little bit plumper, a bit smoother. It definitely provide that kind of laminated glass skin effect and made my skin quite glowy as a result. Whereas today I did not apply this and I feel like my makeup still looks okay and my skin looks good, but I have noticed around my chin area, there's a bit more dry patches coming through. Whereas yesterday, that was most definitely not the case with this. I like how makeup adheres to the skin. I like that it gets rid of dry patches. The third thing I like about it is that it actually moisturizes my face. So I tested this on its own without moisturizer, without applying a sunscreen on top, just to see how it performs on its own. And my skin was comfortably moisturized as well. So if you're someone that feels like you don't want a lot of layers of moisturizing products, but you still want some type of primer that really adheres to the skin. It has that grippy like effect while giving a nice smooth plump appearance to the skin and a little bit of glow. I think you would like Hydramer, especially if you've tried the J1 Jelly Pack in the past and you liked that product. I feel like this is pretty similar to it. The second makeup product is one that is not new to my channel. I am wearing it on my eyelashes today. It is the Heroin Make Volume and Curl Mascara advanced film. I went all of last year using strictly tubing mascaras, which have been great because I just wanted to really give my eyes a break from so many products. So with tubing mascara, I can just wash them off easily with water. But I have to say, I really missed the performance of this mascara in particular, and I will have a separate eye makeup remover if it means that I can use this once again in my makeup routine. I just like how it makes my lashes look a little bit longer, a little bit more volume, really keeps it upturned for the entire day. I don't experience any smudging. So really glad to have this mascara back in my makeup routine. And I think it will be here to stay from this point on maybe with some rotation of a tubing mascara every so often. The last makeup item I've been really liking ever since I got it has been this lipstick right here that I'm also wearing. It is the Dior Rouge Dior Strong Matte Lipstick in the shade 634. It is an orangey red color. The main thing I like about this lipstick is the formula. As you can see, it's quite a bright red color but it doesn't take over my face entirely. That's not the only thing you see on my face. It looks more in harmony with the rest of my complexion. And what I think this is doing is that it's giving a really nice blotted type of look. It's not super saturated on my lips, hence being the star of my face where I get a little bit washed out. It's just cohesive with the rest of my makeup, making me feel really comfortable wearing a really bright, vibrant color such as this. Also, because the color is not as saturated, it gives a blotted look. I find I can wear this warm toned lipstick. So I have self-diagnosed myself as a cool undertone in the winter category. And I was speaking to my friend who I talk a lot of color analysis with about this lipstick and why it works so well for my complexion despite being a cool undertone and we've deduced that one i am a winter type leaning towards bright i can work bright colors in my wardrobe and in my makeup and secondly as i've touched upon the saturation is not as heavy 
it is a little bit more subdued, making it way more cohesive for my complexion. And finally, this lipstick is comfortable to where it does not dry out my lips, even if I were to apply it without prepping beforehand. So overall, I really like the formula of the Dior Rouge Dior matte lipsticks. And I might actually go check out the store and see if there's other colors I could add to my makeup collection. The next category of favorites is fragrance. This one was gifted to me by a friend and actually the Dior Rouge Matte Lipstick was also gifted to me from a friend. This one is the Jo Malone Blackberry and Bay Cologne. It's just a small size of it. And she had a variety of fragrances to choose from because she was giving it to a bunch of friends. But I chose the Blackberry and Bay one because it was one different from what I currently have in my fragrance collection. It's a very small collection, but I do have a few fragrances. This one, I like how the smell of it is a nice light cool type of smell. It's quite masculine actually. This scent is something that I feel like my father, my brother would wear because it's just like a really nice cool scent. But what I like about this in particular for myself is that there's no heavy musk on it that just sets on my skin. So having said that, this is quite a light fragrance that does fade rather quickly, but I still like it nonetheless because it is something different in my collection with that nice, cool, masculine type of smell that I don't want to overwhelm me in general. I have a really hard time describing fragrances, so I hope I did a good job of this one, but that's what I think of. I think of this as a smell that my father, my brother would wear, the men in my life would wear, but it's suitable for me. The next set of favorites is hair care. So I have a shampoo here and a thermoprotectant spray, both from a salon brand called Helen Seward. This was recommended to me by my mother-in-law. She uses the dry hair version of the shampoo, but when I went to purchase this shampoo, it is for fragile and damaged hair, but for my oily scalp, this works completely fine. And actually the reason why I picked up a salon brand is because I wanted to try something different for my hair care this winter because I have noticed that I've been having quite a bit of hair fall and I understand that's normal for the winter months, but I still felt like for me, it was a bit more than I would like to have fallout. I've noticed also that my scalp became oily really fast, way oilier than before. And I've also noticed a bit of irritation on my scalp. Granted, that's probably my fault because once I finished up my scalp serum, I didn't bother repurchasing it for quite a while. So I was going scalp serumless. I was just using rose water spray to kind of lightly hydrate my scalp in the meantime. But clearly for the winter months, that wasn't enough. And it's really silly of me that I did not pick up a scalp serum for the winter months, but I did. I actually purchased a few tiny bottles of the Helen Seward scalp treatment, but then I ran out of that and repurchased what I was originally using. This brings me back to the products at hand, but mostly with the shampoo, I like that it's a very light cream consistently, nothing that overwhelms the moisture of my scalp and makes me look extra oily. It gets rid of the excess oils fine and it does not irritate my scalp. Using this for the past couple of months, there's still quite a bit of product left. It is pricier than the two euro shampoo and conditioners that I've been using in the past, but I am happy that despite the price point, which is not actually a whole lot, but it's definitely more than I would like to pay for shampoo, more than $10 really. Even though it's more than $10, 10 euros, it still performs well and there's still quite a bit of mileage to this shampoo. So I'm glad I'm using it right now, especially during the winter months where I feel like my scalp is more prone to irritation from the dryness. The second hair care product I've been really liking for the past couple of months is a thermoprotectant, also from Helen Seward. It is the Indico Styling System Pure Protection with Organic Extracts Blow Dry. So this does its job at protecting my hair from the heat. I feel like it could be just a touch more moisturizing on the tips, but it's not something that bothers me so much. My hair still feels really good. I'm just used to excess moisture on the tips of my hair. What I really like about this spray in particular is that it helps me style my low maintenance hair. So I've noticed ever since I started using this, I spray it all over my scalp and hair. 
I've noticed that I've had just a touch more volume than before and if I do want to style my hair maybe give it a bit more of a wave at the top so it falls more nicely i spray some of this use the blow dryer and hair brush as needed the spray not only gives me volume but the style does stay because i don't really like using hairspray or anything like that so i really like the multifunctionality of this spray we'll obviously continue using it and I may just repurchase it. All right, that is it for the beauty category of my current favorites. Now moving on to the more miscellaneous lifestyle items, starting off with this purse right here. This is a secondhand, by far, baby kush grain leather purse. It does come with a detachable chain. I took it off because I've just been using it like this. I purchased this because I've been wanting some type of small, cute, dress down dress up purse i feel like the ones i have are just too bulky they're not a nice leather i just wanted a really nice quality small black purse in my very small purse collection the reason why i purchased this purse in particular out of all the super popular ones on the market right now on social media is that i actually saw this in person it was at a cafe the woman beside me actually had this exact color with the chain attached I was so intrigued by it because it pretty much met the requirements of what I wanted as a go-to tiny black purse for all occasions. So I asked her what brand it was, where she got it, and she so kindly spoke to me, shared with me the information I wanted. And she's the one who actually recommended for me to look online for secondhand, and I've never shopped secondhand online before, but I found this purse, as you can see, in excellent condition for 57% off. So I took the plunge, I purchased it, and honestly, I've been using it ever since I got it. I like the look of this purse. I like the feel of it. I've received compliments on this purse already. It goes with many of my outfits because I do wear a lot of black. I'm really happy I took the plunge to buy something secondhand online. It was a great experience. And obviously I'm glad I got this for 57% off. Speaking of sales, the second miscellaneous lifestyle item that I want to share with you all are these shoes right here that I got for a very good price. It's the Adidas Advantage. I got this at an Adidas outlet and I paid around 40 something euros, a very good price. The reason I picked them up is because I wanted really good walking shoes, shoes that I can just wear for the entire day and just be comfortable. I was also hoping that when I first wore this that I wouldn't have to break it in, that I would not get any blistering whatsoever. And that's exactly what happened. I walked around for a few hours last weekend in these shoes and my feet were comfortable the entire time. No discomfort whatsoever, no tight feeling on my feet. They were able to just kind of spread perfectly within the shoe. It has a good amount of support, and in my opinion, they are stylish because it's a pair of white sneakers. I've been wanting a pair of pure white sneakers for a long time, especially during the summer months because I have noticed that the vans that I have, I noticed that the canvas on them has been slightly sun bleached. At first I'm like, oh, maybe it's kind of dirty. No, they've been sun bleached slightly. So I definitely wanted a pair of white shoes for the sunnier days. I originally wanted the Adidas Stan Smiths because the quality of material is better. But I saw online that the Advantage were really good alternatives to the Stan Smith, especially if you're on a budget. So keep note of that if you are looking into the Stan Smiths, but you're not really liking the price point a whole lot. There is a bit of color at the back, even though I'm not someone that wears a whole lot of color, as you might have seen from all my videos and my outfits. But it does have this bronzy gold detailing that I don't mind a whole lot. And the logo has the same bronzy gold color. But overall, it's a white pair of shoes and I'm really happy I picked these up. My feet thank me. The next favorite I purchased during the New Year sales and it's a brand that my friend recommended to me when I was on the hunt for new bras because I have not updated my bras in a very long time and I actually, TMI, have not been wearing a whole lot of bras. I've been using pasties instead, which have been so freeing, but I still felt like I needed a good set of bras to rely on when the occasion asked for it. The brand is called Sloggy. I purchased their seamless bras in a nude color and a black color. I've been really enjoying wearing them because it feels so good on the skin. 
I love wearing bras that have no underwires, especially no stiff cups where, you know, again, TMI, like when I do get my size, say at Lizenza or Victoria's Secret, sure, it's the set size that is supposed to be suited to me, but I can't fill the cups and it just felt awkward to wear them, especially if I wanted to wear a low tank top or something, the cups would just be so firm and I felt like it was just really uncomfortable to wear, whereas with the sloggy bras, they just set nicely on my skin, they fit my cup size, they fit my waist, and it's super comfortable, no underwire. They are without a doubt the best bras I have ever owned. If I have a picture of them, I'll leave them up here just for your reference. And you don't have to get this brand in particular, just the style and the construction of it in general, which is a seamless bra and one without a stiff cup. That's it for the style related lifestyle items that I've been really liking the past couple of months. Now moving on to more bookish related things. So the first one is my moleskin journal. I've never owned a moleskin journal before. Last year I have started bullet journaling and just journaling more in general. And let me say, love the quality of this, especially with this Muji 0.5 millimeter pen that my friend got for me. I got the dotted version of the notebook so I can customize to my liking when it comes to bullet journaling. And I've been really happy with this. I've been using it every day since the beginning of this year. I know we're in the technological age and I could just be using my computer or my phone, which I pretty much reach for every day but there is something about writing your to-dos and your thoughts on paper that feels a bit more less restrictive, let's say. I don't want to show you too much from this journal because it is quite personal, but I will show you that I am filming this at the beginning of March, so I most definitely need to start my February reflections. This page, I reserve it for reflecting on the plan I made for the month prior, what I have succeeded with the tasks that I set out for myself, maybe what's failed and I could have done better. Just reflecting on the past month and my feelings in general. The next page here I already set up, it is my March spread. So on this side, I have all the days of the month listed. That's how I like to list the month best. And on this side is where I will put my plan for the month of March. At the top, as you can see, I wrote March in four different languages. The list of languages that I kind of speak, but I'm really trying to retain and learn. So not just English, but also French, Italian, and Bulgarian. The next book favorite I'm going to mention is actually a fan fiction, a Harry Potter fan fiction. So a little bit of information about myself. 10 to 12 years ago, I was reading a lot of Harry Potter fanfics and Twilight fanfics. I was a dedicated fan of both those series, but again, it's been a decade or more since I've read a fan fiction. And the reason why I picked up this one in particular is because it was recommended by my friend who saw it on BookTok, so TikTok book types of videos, and a lot of people were recommending this fan fiction to read. We were waiting for the third book of Crescent City to come out, and that's another little bit of information. I read all the Sarah J Maas books recently, like the past few months. I started off with Akatar. The second series I read was Throne of Glass, and in my opinion, it is the best series that Sarah J Maas has wrote. And thirdly, Crescent City, which by the way, is not my favorite series. I read the third book, not my favorite series. But anyways, we were waiting for the third book to come out and I thought, okay, you know what? I'll give this fan fiction a try. And let me tell you, it destroyed me in the best of ways. This is based on post Hogwarts wartime espionage, enemies to lovers type of relationship in the book. It's based off of Hermione Granger and Draco Malfoy's relationship. They're the two main characters in this story and it was so good it's like the themes of tragedy despair sadness i personally while reading this book felt very hopeless for the characters like that's how sad i got while reading this book beginning of the story i was like what the hell am i reading during the story afterwards i was like what the hell is this but in the best of ways like i said it brought out a different set of emotions in me that I haven't had while reading a book before. The last time I felt such sadness for a character in a book was when I read Throne of Glass, Assassin's Blade, Sam Cortland. If you know, you know, that one shook me to my core. 
that level of sadness is what I felt in the duration of reading this story. It was so good and so sad. I told my friend who recommended it to me and didn't read it yet. I said, don't read this. It's too sad for you. Because if you can't handle the level of tragedy in stories in general, I don't recommend this to you, but if you can and you're willing to read a very sad tale with, like, I don't want to spoil it, but with a decent ending, I highly recommend this fan fiction, especially if you are a Harry Potter fan and you know the characters, you will most definitely really like this story. So again, highly recommend to those of you that can handle such heavy themes in a story. If you can't, don't bother reading this. It's heavy. Even for myself, I was like, I was pretty winded while reading this. We are down to my last favorite for 2024 so far, but I actually started using this in late November, December. It is a supplement. Supplements I've mentioned here or there on my channel, but I never really talked about it in full in a video because right now at this point in time, I'm actually not supplementing a whole lot. I'm getting all the nutrition I possibly can from food and I do feel like it's paying off greatly. But one supplement that I really wanted to start using because I've heard so many benefits from it and I kind of wish I started it sooner because I first heard about it in high school. That is cod liver oil, but this one is fermented cod liver oil by Green Pastures. And it's not that the oil itself is fermented, it's the cod liver that has been fermented that is the traditional way to extract the oil from the cod liver. I heard about this brand because my friend is using it. So I first purchased the capsules and I went through, you know, a whole jar of that. But once I finished it, I decided to opt for the actual liquid itself because about, I believe, five of those capsules equal to one teaspoon of the liquid. So I felt like I would get better use out of this supplement if I got the liquid. I thought it wouldn't hurt to give this a try. It still has a good amount of vitamin A, vitamin D, and that's actually one of the reasons I started taking this because it's a natural source of vitamin D and also the omega-3s in it. What I want to say about it so far after taking this cod liver oil for the past few months is that I feel like it's been helping with my skin in a way that it just really reduces the inflammation from my breakouts. I feel like ever since I started taking this daily for the past few months that I really noticed a difference in my acne breakouts in particular. So it's not to say that supplements will eliminate your breakouts entirely. I find my breakouts are very well maintained even without this supplement just eating the right way a very nutrient dense diet but you know the holidays passed i like going out with friends and ordering not so great foods sometimes fried foods and as a result i do break out but if i eat them more consistently which i have been i have been going out once a week basically eating out i have noticed that my breakouts have been feeling a little bit more inflamey but Ever since I started taking the liquid one in particular, I noticed that when it's my time of the month where I experience the most breakouts, they're definitely not as intense. They don't linger as long and I just feel like they go away a lot faster. They're just not as painful and I do credit it to supplementing with fermented cod liver oil. Again, I still break out, especially if I am eating these shitty foods, if I am eating out. But the main thing is that the inflammation and the pimple and the size just does not last as long. And the only thing I switched up lately was using the liquid version of fermented cod liver oil. Let me know in the comments down below if you do supplement with cod liver oil or fish oil in general and what you've noticed about your skin. I'd love to read about your experience. All right, that is it for my current favorites of 2024. So not just skincare, we got some body care, hair care, miscellaneous items in relation to style, books, supplements. As always, I hope you find content like this helpful and informative or just enjoyable in general, especially with some lighthearted content such as this. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel down below for future videos. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about the products I have mentioned. 
Do you have any fanfics that you like reading as well when it comes to the Harry Potter universe? I would love to hear about your recommendations. Been really into the Hermione Granger, Draco Malfoy relationship. So let me know in the comments down below if you have any fanfic recommendations for that in particular. And yeah, that is it for this video. I will see you all soon. Ciao.